Welcome. In this video, we will discuss about the Indian laws and the blocking of internet content. Now, if you have been uh, like watching news or if you have been uh, recently seen the various trend on Twitter or such social media, you would have known that there are lot of to and fro motion between the various celebrities, the international celebrities who have said some things about the uh, ongoing farmers protest as well as the Indian government who has tried to put uh, hold on the content or has asked the uh, organization for an example Twitter to block those accounts which have gone ahead and actually have started a very controversial hashtag you must have seen so the uh, hashtag which includes the terms like genocide now these are very serious allegation and such kind of hashtag could really create problems in the society. So in that regard, the Indian uh, laws or Indian uh, agencies have asked the Twitter to block certain accounts. But there are again scuffle going on between Twitter, which is like uh, going ahead with that it has uh, these accounts have not violated their privacy policy and so on and so forth. Now again, you don't have to know all about it. Uh, like every day commentary, you don't have to understand it. But what you have to actually understand is do the government of india have such kind of powers where it could ask the tech giants like twitter facebook to block the content so in that regard in this particular video what we are going to focus on we will understand what indian laws what kind of authority the indian government have to ask such uh, platforms such uh, organization to put an hold on certain type of content so let's start so what is this act? So the first one is your Information Technology Act of 2000. So this is in fact this is the one which could be considered as the corner stone for everything which is related to IT in India. So in India the Information Technology Act of 2000 as amended from time to time governs all activities related to the use of computer resources. So not only the social media platform or not only internet anything which is remotely also related to the computer sources that is governed under the IT Act of 2000. It covers all intermediaries who play a role in the use of computer sources and electronic record. Now what are these intermediaries, how they are defined, we will discuss about it just in the upcoming slides. So for now just hold the thought and try to understand that intermediaries are the people who play the role that how these computer sources or anything uh, electronic records would be utilized by the end user. The role of intermediaries has been spelled out in separate rules framed from the purpose in 2011 Information Technology Intermediaries Guidelines Rule of 2011. So just remember there is an IT Act of 2000 which deals with anything related to computer resources and then there are specifically guidelines also for the intermediaries which came up in 2011. So these are the things you should remember from here. Now let's move forward and quickly understand what exactly or how exactly are intermediaries defined in the IT Act of 2000. So intermediary is defined in section 21W of the IT Act. So which section? So just remember for your when you are writing your main answer it's good that you uh, substantiate your answer so if you are able to write like section 2 of the it act of 2000 uh, define the intermediaries it's just give good impression so remember section 2 the term intermediaries include provider of telecom service network service internet service and web hosting besides search engines online payment auction site online marketplace and cyber cafe so what you can understand from all that so basically what what all are considered intermediary so even from that perspective Airtel is an intermediary then from that you can understand Google is an intermediary so is the Facebook so is Twitter so these are what is considered as the intermediaries as per the definition defined in the act of 2000 it includes any person who on behalf of another receives, store or transit 
any electronic record so that is the thing so uh, there are services which receives the information there are ones which stores it there are ones which transmits it and there are certain which do all the three or the combination of all these so this is how it works any any intermediary any individual any organization which is dealing with the receiving storing and transmitting of electronic records will be held accountable as per the intermediary of the it act of 2000 this is the gist of it just remember that part so social media platform would fall under this definition that's what we just discussed that your fb twitter uh, instagram all these will be a part of the intermediaries only so I hope you understood what are intermediaries because going forward like when you are reading various articles also in the newspaper you will see this term. So just remember intermediaries are something which has been defined in the IT Act of 2000 and by definition they are the one who are able to either receive, store or transmit the electronic records. Now let's move forward and see the section 69 of the IT Act. Now this is the one which is generally quoted in various places uh, from 2015 onward when it was a very famous Shreya Singhal case. Now this is something for you to go ahead and check. Check all the important judgments which came out in the Shreya Singhal case of 2015. Coming back to the topic, let's just quickly see what is the content of the section 69. So it confers on the central and state government the power to issue direction to intercept, monitor or decrypt any information generated, transmitted, received or stored in any computer resource. Now this is the thing, just um, again this is very technical knowledge, very bureaucratic knowledge but what you have to understand from here is that that section 69 of the IT Act is the one which gives the power to the government to intercept. So this is the power through which the government could ask any intermediary to give uh, data to it or to intercept the data, to decrypt the data. All this power is actually coming from the section 69. This is the thing you should remember. The ground on which these power may be exercised are, so it's not like they can intercept any communication because we know that India also has a fundamental right under article 19 which talks about the freedom of speech and expression. So they cannot, like government itself cannot go ahead and intercept any kind of information. There are particular grounds on which it will go ahead and intercept the information going in the electronic medium. So what are those grounds? So in the interest of sovereignty or integrity of India, defense of India and security of these states. Now this is the major one which has been utilized by state from time to time. That anything if it is uh, threatening the integrity of India or sovereignty of India or security of India, the government has the power under section 69 to go ahead and intercept that information. Friendly relationship with foreign state if any information or any kind of uh, um, content which is on media and that is posing a threat to the relationship, the foreign relationship India has with other country, that uh, kind of information can also be decrypted. Public order or for preventing incitement to commission of any cognizable offence relating to these for investigating any offence. So in order to investigate any offence also like uh, in order to go ahead and check all about the crime that has happened. So in that case also the government has the power to ask for the electronic records. Similarly if there is a case of the disruption in the public order at that time also it can ask. So these are the criteria, these are the grounds which has been laid out when they happen. The central government and the state government can give direction to intercept, monitor or decrypt any information. So this is the thing you should remember. It's not like they could go ahead and do it for every kind of information. It has to fulfill either of these grounds. Now what is the process of blocking internet website? So uh, we know that there is also a thing when the certain kind of websites have been blocked like uh, certain uh, content which is considered uh, uh, against the morality of the society or could incite violence in the public. All these kind of websites, the content which is available over there is blocked. But what is the process? So section 69A is the one which deals with it. For similar reason and grounds, enables the center to ask any agency of the government or any intermediary to block access to public of any information generated, transmitted, received or stored 
or hosted on any computer resources. So this is the power section. 69A is the one which gives power that it could ask the any agency or intermediary to block the access. Now over here it was asking to decrypt or monitor the information under the section 69A it can ask for the blocking of content. Any such request for blocking access must be based on reason given in writing. So this is again a kind of a clause which is mentioned in the act itself that the reason has to be mentioned in the writing that why such kind of blocking is necessary. So these are the certain provisions given in the IT Act of 2000. Now let's again move forward and try to understand what are the obligation like when we are talking about the Twitter case for an example, what obligation does it has? So intermediaries are required to preserve and retain specific information in a manner and format prescribed by the center for a specified duration. So this is the thing. Center is the one who will give them the direction like till uh, how much long you can store this kind of information. Contravention of this provision may attract a prison term up to three years besides a fine. Now this is something interesting point uh, you guys should remember that if they are not adhering to the request by the center there is a provision for the fine as well as the jail term also. When a direction is given for monitoring, the intermediary and any person in charge of computer resource should extend technical assistance in form of giving access or securing access to the resource involved. Like for an example, the center has given access that the computer of this particular person or the site of this or the account of this person need to be accessed for the reason mentioned earlier. In that case, it is the duty of the intermediary to provide the technical assistance. Like for an example, if the account needs to be checked in that case, the intermediary should give access to that account. So this is the idea. Failure to extend such assistant may entail a present term up to seven years besides a fine. So like if they are uh, going uh, not following the center's directive to preserve the data for a specified time, in that case the present term is for three years. But in case if they are not providing the technical assistant or if they are not following the orders of the center, in that case the jail terms go up to seven years. So there is a probability of seven years of jail term. Failure to comply with the direction to block access to public on government's written request also attracts a present term up to seven years besides a fine. So just in case like for an example the Twitter case if the Twitter is actually not uh, complying with the government when it has already uh, issued a written notice in that case again there is a provision for seven years of jail term. So these are the things these are the obligations which are uh, there for the intermediaries to comply with. Now what are the liability in that case? So liability is mentioned in the section 79 of the IT Act which makes it clear that an intermediary shall not be liable for any third party information, data or communication link made available or hosted by him. Now this section 79 is the one which actually makes lot of social media to remain out of any kind of uh, judicial, judicial purview because this particular essentially means that whatever content is coming on their website they are not they won't be held liable for it. So that is something like for an example if there is a fake news circulating in the WhatsApp it won't hold the WhatsApp reliable. So this is the section which has become kind of a mammoth in its own and because of it the social giants, social media giants have been able to uh, like uh, keep safe from the radar of the judicial scrutiny. Third party information mean any information dealt with by network services provider in its capacity as an intermediary. Again in this case the third party information for which they are not liable is mostly along the line that the people who are using their platform and not working for them. So this is the idea, these are the important section of the laws. So just remember, whenever you are talking about the idea that uh, there is a like tussle going on between the social media giants, the various other tech giants, in that case just remember there is a very important act or the sole act in India which guide uh, this whole process that is the IT Act of 2000. And few important section of it is section 69, 69A. They talks about how the government has the power to block the content or to monitor or intercept the content over these uh, intermediaries 
as well as section 79 which kind of uh, give free hand to these platform services to not held liable for the third party content so these are the important information you should remember so i hope you have understood this video if you have any doubt feel free to drop a comment thank you